Okay, tuloy-tuloy na po itong ating pag-aaral at salamat sa Panginoon. Uh, meron tayong sapat na oras. Ang atin pong topic is serving the law of, of God. <clears throat> Ito po ay isang pag-aaral na kasama at uh, kadugtong, kabahagi ng mga pinag-aaralan po natin sa loob ng nakaraang ilang mga buwan. And our text is actually Romans 7, 14 to 25, but And we have read the whole chapter of Romans, chapter 7. Our key verse is Romans, chapter 7, verse 25. At maganda po na basahin natin sabay-sabay muli ang talatang iyon. Or we can start with verse 24. Sabi ni Apostol Pablo sa Romans 7, 24 and 25, after knowing his... Uh, real status as a servant of Christ and a believer in Christ, ito po yung kanyang sinabi, kasama sa mga sinulat niya, hindi lamang uh, sa mga mananampalataya nung una, kundi para sa atin. Sabi niya dito, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Nakita ni Apostol Pablo ang problema dito sa kanyang buhay na dapat ay uh, makita din natin bilang mga mananampalataya. Kaya mayroon siyang decision. Sabi niya, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Kaya po, ang pamagat ng ating lesson is serving the law of God. <clears throat> This is, uh, I think, a, a one of the challenging messages na binigay sa atin, sa akin ng Panginoon. Dahil sa atin pong buhay, mga kapatid, may mga bagay na hindi natin napapansin kung minsan. How conscious are we that a good number of people struggle so much like a curse with daily conflict, misbehavior, disappointment, and failures? Ito po yung mga, pang, hindi lang po tayo namumroblema sa, sa traffic, sa trabaho, Pero mayroon tayong mga problema, conflict within, misbehavior, our disappointments, our failures. Do we look at those things uh, seriously? Ito po ba ay pinapansin natin sa ating, mga ba, sa ating mga buhay? And this conflict, misbehavior, disappointments, and failures happen daily in the home, not only outside the home. It happens in the church and in the larger sphere of um, our society. And much more, how aware are we that this struggle comes like a never-ending cycle? Paulit-ulit. May problema ako, may problema sa bahay, may problema sa aking pag-uugali, may mga disappointments ako, may mga failures ako. Minsan may solusyon, kaya lang uulit siya, katulad ng panahon ng mga judges, may mga solusyon sila sa kanilang problema after they, they uh, run away from God and, and disobey God, babalik sila. And it becomes a never-ending cycle. <clears throat> and it seems inexistent to many of us because it cannot be seen by other people. Itong struggle na ito, itong problema na ito, hindi napapansin. Because it is happening within. Ito ay mga pangyayaring problema sa loob ng isang tao. This morning's message, serving the law of God, is a challenge that we will look into what is within before we look into what is or to that which is outside. Kadalasan po, mga kapatid sa ating buhay, natutokso tayo na pag may problema tayo, tinitingnan natin ano ang dahilan. Ito ba ay galing sa labas o kung minsan lagi nating sinisisi ang mga bagay na nasa labas. As we see this struggle happening, what solution can we be prescribe and implement? Kung nakikita po natin ang problema natin, behavior ko, uh, failures ko, disappointment ko, paulit-ulit, ganun na naman, Natapos ko na itong problema na ito, ano ba ang mga solusyon? O ano pa ang mga uh, gusto nating mga kaparaanan na gagamitin para masolve itong mga problema na ito? And have we ever asked, what is the cause of it? <clears throat> yes, maybe we have asked, what is the cause? Why I go through these problems struggling daily in my life? And have we ever realized that the first thing we usually do is to put blame on others? Pag mayroon tayong problema, ang una natin ginagawa ay ano? 
sisihin ang iba, like our first parents, uh, like what our first parents did in the Garden of Eden, hindi ba? Si Adan at si Eva, nung sila nagkasala, sabi ni, Ad, ni, ni, ano, ni Ab, Adan, itong babae kasing binigay mo sa akin. Hmm. Anong sabi ni Eve? Ito kasing ahas na nandito sa halamanan. Anong sabi ng ahas? Mabuti pa yung ahas, hindi siya nag-blame sa iba. Pero it is man's nature to put blame on others like what our first parents in the Garden of Eden did. And we have, and have we also realized that we hardly come to the point of asking like David and Jeremiah sa 1 Samuel 17.29 and David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Sa problemang nangyayari araw-araw, parang cycle sa aking buhay, Wag na muna sa problema ko sa iba. May, may, I have personal problems. What have I now done? Ano ba ang ginawa ko? Ano ba ang dahilan? Bakit nangyayari ito sa akin? In the same way, <coughs> In the same way, makikita din po natin sa 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 1. If you have your Bibles with you, Maganda po na mapansin din natin yan, 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 1. Ito po yung katangian ng mga unang mga, ng, uh, mga halimbawang, mga Bible characters na matututo tayo sa kanilang pagharap sa mga problema in the struggles that they encounter in life. And David fled from Nayot in Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is my iniquity? What, and what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? Very rare. Pambihira po sa mga tao na pagka may problema, tatanungin niya, ano ang naging kasalanan ko? Kung magtatanong man ang tao, anong naging kasalanan ko? Parang pagtatanong na sinasabing, wala akong kasalanan. But in this point, David was asking it with sincerity, with seriousness in his, in his life. Ano ba ang naging kasalanan ko na naging dahilan ito ng mga pangyayaring problema sa aking buhay? The same way Jeremiah had said this also. So these two Bible characters will tell us, will show, uh, give us good examples. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 6, ang sabi niya, I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his own to his own course and the, as the horse rushed into the battle. So mapupusok ang tao sa mga problemang dinaranas niya, bibihira ang nagtatanong, ano ang nagawa ko at naging problema ito. At kung <coughs> tayo man ay magtanong, whenever we ask, what have I done? It is a question to <coughs> acquit ourselves para Tanggihan ang sisi sa ating sarili para ilayo ang sisi sa ating sarili. Lots of the ills we suffer in every aspect of our society and in the most unwanted period of our time come from the failure of man to take a serious look of what he is and to consider his sinfulness. <clears throat> sa problem, example na lang sa pang-araw-araw nating buhay, sa problema natin sa lipunan, Biniblame natin ang pamahalaan, biniblame natin ang mga nakaluklok na mga opisyalis sa bawat departamento ng ating, ng ating pamahalaan. Bin, uh, sinisisi natin at binibintangan natin ang ibang mga tao. Pero ilan po sa atin? In just a practical example sa buhay ang nagtanong, ano ang, 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 ang ginawa ko na naging dahilan? Bakit na uh, samot saring problema ang dinaranas ng aming lipunan? Katulad na lang sa pagdadrive. Problema natin lagi ang traffic pero tayo po ba may disiplina sa pagmamaneho? O kasama tayo doon sa violators and then we point our fingers to others? Ito po yung realidad sa buhay natin mga kapatid na hindi natin napapansin but here in, in Romans chapter 7 Paul gave us an example that he looked into himself before he blamed others. Man is so conceited, so conceited Masyado niyang pinapalaki at pinapamper ang kanyang sarili. Having, having so much trust in himself and reject God's part in his life. 
Sa so, maganda itong ating pag-aaral mga kapatid sa tayo ay mga mananampalataya. Sa ating mga problema, pwede nating gawing katuwang, katulong ang Diyos, payo ng Diyos, katotohanan ng salita ng Panginoon para makita po natin ang mga problema natin sa ating buhay upang tayo po ay magkaroon ng tagumpay sa anumang mga disappointments natin, misbehaviors, conflicts within our hearts and our mind and our soul. <clears throat> Now, let us try to take a glance about humanism that affected man's life so much. Man has become so affected by the philosophy of humanism even unwittingly. Hindi man niya gusto, pero apektado tayo. And because of this, there are still many believers in Christ who are behaving as if God is not a reality in their lives. <clears throat> And... To say the least, godliness has become just a ritual, a ceremony, or just a life ideal so that many don't give a serious consideration to it. Sa buhay ng isang kristyano, tayo po ay na- naapektuhan ng, ng philosophy ng humanism. Kung kaya, hindi man natin gusto na maapektuhan tayo noon, ang nangyayari pati ang ating ginagawa para sa Panginoon becomes a ritual. Ginagawa natin dahil nangyayari. Kasama tayo dahil ginagawa ng iba. It becomes a ceremony. Or it just it is just a life ideal. Pwedeng maganda yan, pero hindi tayo kasali sa kagandahan. So that many don't give a serious consideration to a life of godliness. It does not really matter if it becomes their manner of life and practice. Kung, kung sa umagang ito mga kapatid, tanungin natin ang ating mga sarili. Gaano na po kahalaga Gaano kalalim, gaano nag-ugat ang mga bagay na ukol sa Diyos sa ating buhay na hindi pwedeng masira ng anuman, na hindi pwedeng hadlangan ng anuman. <coughs> okay, brief information about humanism. Humanism is a philosophy that is uh, so wide in, it, in its expect, spectrum na Kung pag-aralan po natin, mas ma- ma- marami tayong mga kalituhan, confusion, but just a brief information about huma- humanism. There is what we call Renaissance humanism. It is the spirit of learning that developed at the end of the Middle Ages, 6, 15th, 16th century, with the revival of the classical letters that ushered in a what? A renewed confidence in the ability of human being to determine for themselves what is truth and what? Falsehood. Ito ang humanism na nagsimula sa uh, Middle Ages. Na ang tao ay marunong, na ang tao ay may abilidad, na, na hindi niya kailangan ang Diyos para maitakda niya sa kanyang buhay kung ano ang tama at mali. So it is man, it is up, up to man. Whether uh, to know what is the truth and full, falsehood. Kaya hindi nagkakasundo ang tao minsan kahit sa loob na lang ng bahay. Sa loob ng tahanan, mayroong isang bagay na totoo sa isa, mayroong isang bagay na hindi totoo sa isa, mayroong isang bagay na tama sa isa, pero mali sa isa. Why? Kasi naapektuhan na tayo ng sistema ng, uh, ng philosophy ng humanism. Kanya-kanya tayong pagdetermine kung ano ang tama o kung ano ang mali. That is Renaissance humanism. It started in the Middle Ages. And then we have modern humanism. Also called naturalistic humanism, scientific humanism, ethical humanism. <clears throat> Kaya meron tayong ano, situation ethics. Democratic humanism, right ng lahat. And this is defined by one of the leading proponents named Corliss Lamont. Paano niya dinefine? Modern humanism is a naturalistic philosophy that rejects all supernatural naturalism. Walang supernatural, everything is natural. And relies primarily upon reason and science, democracy and human compassion. So ito yung philosophy ng humanism na sabi nila walang Diyos. There is nothing supernatural. Ang lahat ay pwedeng matutuhan sa pamagitan ng reason, science, democracy, kung anong boses ng nakakarami. But sometimes, although... Uh, Pwede namang magkamali ang nakakarami. And the human compassion. Ito yung modern humanism. And it says, as long as there is no harm, uh, it says, as long as 
I do no harm to others and, and be considerate to their rights, then I am doing fine. <clears throat> the third <coughs> is humanism in general. It teaches us that it is immoral to wait for God to act for us. They say there is no need for body of doctrines, there is no need for church and church creeds, there is no need for church covenant. Ang sarap pag minsan-minsan pa sa ano, pag nababasa ng mga mananampalataya yung church covenant. Bakit? It, it, it imposes something what is wonderful in the life of the believers. The lives of the believers. So ang gen humanism in general teaches us that it is immoral to wait for God to act on us. <clears throat> humanism tells us that whatever our philosophy of the, of the universe may be, including our very own life, it is ultimately our responsibility to determine the kind of world in which we live. Tayo ang magdetermine. We are the captain of our soul. We are the what? The ones who determine our destiny. Yan ang philosophy ng humanism in general. Kaya kung minsan ang isang Kristiyano, hindi niya alam, unwittingly, hindi man niya pinapayagan na apektuhan siya ng takbuhin ng kaisipan ng mga taong naniniwala sa filosofi ng humanism. It's not wrong that we know we are human. But it is a great mistake for us to live without considering God's part in our life. Another thing, just shortly, there are people who are, are called secular humanists. And they adopted the words of an American agnostic named Robert Ingersoll. Siguro sa inyo na mag mapalabasa, nakabasa na kayo ng mga libro ni Robert G. Ingersoll. Ano ang sinabi niya? Ito yung kanyang description sa kanyang sarili bilang isang humanist when i became convicted that the universe is natural that all the ghosts and gods are myths there entered into my brain into my soul and in, into every drop of my blood the sense the feeling the joy of freedom the walls of my prison crumbled and fell ay grabe itong iniisip niya no nung tinanggap ko ng lahat ng bagay ay sa kapaligiran ko ay natural likas lang ito walang espiritu walang dios Sabi niya, doon ko naramdaman ang tunay na ano, kagalakan ng aking paglaya. The walls of my prison crumbled and fell. The dungeon was flooded with light. Ang dating madilim dahil naniniwala ako sa ghosts and gods which are myth. Ay, ngayon ay flooded with light and all the bolts and bars and manacles become dust. I was no longer a servant or a slave. <clears throat> There is there was then for me no master in all the wide wild world a wide world not even in infinite space wala nang naghahari sa akin wala nang nangunguna nagdidikta sa akin <clears throat> I was free free to think to express my thoughts free to live my own ideal free to live myself and those I love free to use all my faculties all my senses free to spread imagination's wings, free to investigate, to guess and dream and hope, free to judge and determine for myself. Para ang saya-saya ng buhay niya. Ganito ang marhalos ang maraming mga Kristiyano sa kanilang mga pangarap sa buhay. Ang sabi niya pa, as he continued in his, uh, in his statement, I was really free. I stood erect and fearlessly, joyously face all the words. Maraming Kristiyano sa napakaraming mga tinuro ng Panginoon ng dos and don'ts ay tila ba nahihirapan. Sabi nila mas maganda siguro kung ako na lang ang magdetermine ng mga bagay itong mga ito na para sa aking buhay itong mga ito ay hindi ko na kailangan. And it, it, it says, he almost come to the point in saying man is a free being and his mistake is to bring God into his life and be under bandage. Sa pag-aakala ng mga tao who are humanist in general, God is a, a slaver. <coughs> uh, Mapangalipin ng Diyos. Mas, ma, mas malaya sila pag walang Diyos sa kanilang buhay. So this morning's message, 
was taken from Apostle's uh, realization of man's never-ending trouble in his life <clears throat> because he failed to serve the law of God. Hindi niya naintindihan. It is only when we learn to serve the law of God that we become free from the never-ending struggles and conflicts we encounter in life. May this message help us find the answer to the struggles that we encounter, not just the external struggles, but the internal struggles. Whether we like it or not, we deny it or not, we see it or not, every person has an internal struggle. Tayo pong lahat ay mayroong problema ang nasa loob. Alisin na muna natin ang mga problema ang nasa labas. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Two things I would like to bring to you, brothers and sisters in the Lord. First, <clears throat> understanding the law in the Bible. Pinag-uusapan natin ang mga sinasabi ng Panginoon ng mga batas sa Old Testament. And so, uh, As I prepare this message, ang hirap pa lang humanap ng mga materials talking and discussing the law. Masyadong general ang pananaw ng tao sa law. So this morning, we'll just divide the two laws that we, we must understand in the Bible. First, the law in the Old Testament. It is often called the law of, Mos uh, the law, the law of Moses, the Mosaic Law, or the Law of the Fathers. Pagkaya na nabasa ninyo sa Bible, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay ang law in the Old Testament. It is commonly known as the Mosaic Law. It is uh, always shortly stated the law with the definite article, the law. That's the first thing that I would like to share to you. The, the Mosaic Law or the law in the Old Testament was given specifically to the nation of Israel. And we can find that In Exodus 19, Leviticus 26:46, and Romans 9:4. So basically, what is the law in the Old Testament? It is called the Mosaic Law, given specifically to the nation of Israel. It is not a law for all nations. It is not a law for all mankind during the Old Testament time and during the early stages of human history. <clears throat> It was made up of three parts. First, the Ten Commandments. Second, the ordinances. And third, the worship system, which include the priesthood, the tabernacle, the offerings, and the festivals. So yun po ang basic uh, parts ng tinatawag nating Mosaic Law. Kaya po ang Mosaic, ang Mosaic Law or the Law of the Old Testament ay hindi lang Ten Commandments. Kaya lang kung, kaya kung maririnig ninyo kung minsan may nagsasabi according to researches that there are 613 laws, all in all, in the Old Testament na ibinigay sa bansang Israel. And the purpose of the Mosaic Law was to accomplish the following. Number one, to reveal the holy character of the eternal God to the nation of Israel. Secondly, to set apart the nation of Israel as distinct from all the other nations. Kaya ngang sabi niya, this is my covenant with Abraham. Yung ordinances, like the circumcision sa mga male when they were born. So, it is to set apart the nation of Israel as, as distinct from all other nations. Number three, <clears throat> to reveal the, sinless, uh, the sinfulness of man. As Paul mentioned the law, and he said, and he mentioned that in Galatians chapter 3, verse 19, sabi niya rin sa Romans chapter 7, kung hindi sana sa kautusan, hindi ko naunawaan ang pagiging napakasama ng kasalanan, the sinfulness of sin. <clears throat> Although the law was good and holy, in Romans chapter 7, verse 12, it did not provide salvation for the nation of Israel. It just showed The sinfulness of man. No man will be declared righteous in the sight of God by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious about sin. And those are the verses. So, in ang purpose, the third purpose of, of the law. The fourth purpose of the law, as we, as we try to understand the laws, in, the laws in the Bible, the Old Testament law, the Mosaic law, 
The fourth purpose is to provide covering of sin through the sacrifice and offerings for the people who had faith in the Lord in the nation of Israel. So, ang, ang mga ordinances the, ay binigay para i-cover their offerings for sin. It's just a covering, hindi pa buo ang kapatawaran sa Old Testament. The sins were just what? Covered. The absolute forgiveness is after Calvary. Pagkatapos na na-fulfill ni Christ, who is the end of the law, sabi niya sa Romans chapter 10 verse 4, He fulfilled all the law. The faith is to provide a way of worship for the community of faith through the yearly feast. So, naging gabay lang it, nila ito para sila ay mag-worship, kaya mayroong feast, mayroong uh, ano, uh, law about the offerings, uh, sacrifices, the killing of animals, the wave offerings, so kung ano-anong mga offerings. That is their, the law was used to provide a way of worship. <clears throat> Number six, to provide God's direction for the physical and spiritual health of the nation. So, bilang isang bansa na namumuhay, bilang isang bansa na pinili ng Diyos dito sa Israel para ingatan sila in their spiritual, uh, physical and spiritual health bilang isang bansa. And finally, to cause the people after Christ came sa, sa darating na panahon, this now on about us who are not Israelites, to see that they couldn't keep the law and that they needed to accept Christ as personal Savior For he had fulfilled the law in his life and paid the penalty for our breaking for it in his death, in his burial, and in his bodily resurrection. Para ipaunawa na mayroong darating na dahil hindi kayang tuparin ng tao, Israel man o hindi mga Israelitas, na naniniwala sa kagandahan ng batas na binigay ng Panginoon, ng mga kautusan na binigay ng Panginoon, ipakilala na walang sino mang makakatupad sa kautusan at ituro ang isang pwede at ganap na makakatupad sa kautusan ang ating Panginoong Iso Kristo. Thus, the believer in Christ has the very righteousness of the law fulfilled in him as he obeys the Holy Spirit who lives within him. So, ang batas sa, sa Old Testament, the Mosaic law, the law, the law of our fathers were given for the nation of Israel and for those who are not Israelites. It is The school, the school master to teach us about sin and to point us to the one who can fulfill the law that is Christ. <clears throat> Now, we, we look at the law in the New Testament. Paul has mentioned that it is the law of faith. And sabi niya dito, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? The law of works, which, is, which he refers to the New Testament? No. But he said, but by the law of faith. The law in the New Testament is different from the law in the Old Testament. I, mayroon pang siyang tinawag dito sa Romans 7.22 and in 7.25, sabi niya, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Ito yung sinasabi ng Panginoon na isusulat ko ang aking utos sa kanilang mga puso, papalitan ko ang kanilang puso ng ng matigas na puso, pusong bato, ng pusong laman. Ang pusong bato pala nasa ano no? Sa Bible. Ngayon ko lang na ano. May kantang pusong bato, di ba? Alam mo 'yun, Sister Baby? Kakinakanta mo 'yun. Saan niya papalitan ko ang kanilang pusong bato ng pusong laman, pusong matigas ng pusong malambot at sa kanilang puso ay susulat ko ang aking batas. At ito yung sinasabi ni Paul na yung puso na hindi na, ay, yung batas na hindi na nakasulat doon sa, sa tinanggap ni Moses as the Ten Commandments o yung mga idiniktan ng mga propeta at ng kanilang mga, mga priest na susundin nila sa Old Testament. This is the law that is written in the hearts of those who are believers in Christ. Sabi niya, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so that, so then, with the mind I myself serve The law of God. The law in the New Testament should be understood as the law of faith, the law of God, and also the law of the Spirit. Romans 8.2 For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. 
So mga kapatid, iba ang law sa Old Testament. It points us to Christ. But the law in the New Testament are the laws written in the hearts of the believers because Christ is in them. Si Kristo ay nananahan sa kanila. That's why it is the law of faith. Because they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they know who Christ is, they know what they cannot do, they know what Christ has done, and therefore because of the truth that they are helpless sinners, cannot save themselves, and it is Christ who saved them, mayroong batas na itinuro si Kristo that was written in their hearts. It is the law of faith, the law of God, the law of righteousness. And there is another name for this law, the law of liberty. We find the law of liberty first mentioned in James 1.25. At sinasabi niya dyan, But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer, but who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Binanggit uli yang law of liberty sa James chapter 2 verse 12. So, sa pangunawa po natin, the law in the New Testament is different from the law in the Old Testament. The law in the New Testament is a law of faith because Christ is in the hearts of those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. James here refers to the gospel when he called it the law of liberty. Paul said it is the law of faith because faith in Christ has made us free. which although it is called here a law, strictly speaking, it is not a law that, comprised of, that is comprised of requirements and enforced by sanctions. Iba itong kautusan sa, old, sa, sa New Testament kaysa sa Old Testament. Ang kautusan sa Old Testament, pag hindi mo sinod-nod, ay ano? May parusa. May kapahamakan. Sa New Testament, what are these laws? These laws tells us that if we obey it, we become free. We are not sanctioned. We become free to experience the goodness of God. We become free to experience the blessings of God. <coughs> Therefore, beloved in the Lord, as we know that it is the law that does not require so many things and imposes sanction, it is the law that is that rather this law is a declaration of righteousness and salvation by Christ and offer peace and pardon by Him and a free promise of eternal life through Him. This is a law of hope. The law of faith is the law of hope. The law of faith is the law of peace. It, is not, it does not bring guilt. Pag ginawa natin, pag sinunod na, hindi natin nasunod ang Old Testament law, it brings guilt. But when we follow the New Testament law, it gives freedom. It brings joy. It brings peace. It's, it brings peace. The, compassion, the comparison of the two contradictory terms, law and liberty, made the point, especially to the Jews, that this was an entirely new way of thinking about both of this law. Kaya nga ang tawag ni James ay law of what? Liberty. The Old Testament is law of what? Sanctions. Law of punishment. Law of curse. Sabi niya sa, uh, sa Deuteronomy, sabi niya, pag sinunod ninyo, blessing. Pag hindi ninyo, sinunod. Sumpa. Punishment. It is a law that brings in righteousness and true holiness. Kaya sabi ni Paul sa Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, that she put on the new, <clears throat> the new man, which after Christ is created in holiness. and true in, in righteousness and true holiness. This law helps us to understand that we are now, because in Christ we are now righteous and we can live in true holiness. <clears throat> now, Paul said, after showing to us that the law in the New Testament is a law of faith, It is a law of <clears throat> righteousness. It is the law of the Spirit. He also called it the law of God. James called it 
the law of liberty. Now, the second thing na gusto kong tingnan, hindi lang, natin ma- magka- hindi lang tayo magkaroon ng konting uh, pagkaunawa, basic, foundational understanding about the laws in the Bible, the law in the New Testament in contrast to the law of the New Testament. The second thing is that we need to understand what Paul say mean when he said serving the law of God. Serving the law of God constantly reminds the believers daily conflict with sin. We are not in conflict with the law. Hindi ang kalaban natin ay ang kautusan sa Old Testament. Kundi ang itinuturo ng kautusan sa Old Testament which is sin. And the believers in Christ should always and daily <clears throat> realize and never forget that we are always in daily conflict with sin. <clears throat> when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, He enters our hearts and lives in us. <clears throat> <Sorry. clears throat> now, this law which is the law of God, the law of liberty, the law of faith, the law of righteousness, <clears throat> brings us into a new relationship with Christ. Pero ito po yung nagiging problema ng marami. Have you ever heard the query of some new believers which say, why is it that I got more problems than when I was yet? I was yet a non-believer. Sa Tagalog, ito yung tanong, bakit ba na kung kailan ako ano nanampalataya kay Kristo doon naman dumami ang problema ko bakit because by believing in Christ Christ is in us he enters our hearts and he lives in us he puts in a law the law of faith the law of righteousness the law of the Spirit, the law of God, the law of liberty into our hearts. That's why we see what is sin. Yung law na yan ng New Testament, which Christ brought into our hearts when He entered our hearts, ay parang isang liwanag, isang spotlight na ipinapakita niya ang ano, ang lahat ng karumihan natin. That's why we become conscious, we now have, be, uh, have become more conscious about sin rather than what we know about uh, than the sin that we know or we do not know when we were still non-believers. Kaya ang isang kristyano, hindi <clears throat> siya dapat magtaka, bakit ang dami kong problema? Kung kailan pa ako naging kristyano, tsaka ako napakaraming problema ngayon, ang bigat-bigat tsata ng buhay. Hindi kapatid, dumating lang ang liwanag sa buhay mo dahil kay Kristo. Subukan ninyong gawing laging madilim ang bahay ninyo. Nakakortina lahat. Huwag kayong maglinis sa loob ng isang buwan. Pagkatapos buksan yung kortina, ano makikita ninyo? Ha? Maliwanag, syempre. Ano makikita niyo sa loob? Na hindi niyo napapansin nung medyo madilim pa dahil nandyan nakaladlad ang kortina. Walang liwanag na pumapasok. Mga maliliit lang na ano, parang ano kasi. Ang ganda kasi ng mga ilaw na ano to, pen light, sa corner light lang, doon sa ceiling light. Pagdating ng liwanag, makita ay! Makasulat na pala ako ng pangalan ko. Kadrawing na pala ako ng smiley at saka mga pouts dito. Ganyan din, buhay ng isang Christian. Serving the law constantly reminds the believers of the daily conflict with sin. Because we are now believers in, in Christ. And as such, sabi niya nga, we are transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Acts 26.18 you can read it also in Colossians 1.13, 1 Thessalonians 5.14. Paul has emphasized it, so the, the, the life of the believers living after the law of God, having that, uh, the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts, showing to us that we are what? Wretched sinners without Christ. Ang hindi natin nakikita noon, hindi natin napapansin noon, nung tayo ay hindi pa kristyano, nang si Kristo ay pumasok sa ating puso, nakikita natin ngayon. And that's why there is conflict of, of sin. This, there is an inner conflict against sin in the life of a believer. Ang hindi po natin napapansin, ang, ang lagi natin napapansin ay conflict natin sa labas. 
Naku, hindi naman kami nagkasundo nung partner ko sa business. Ay naku, hindi naman kami nagkasundo nung teacher ko. Ginawa ko ng best ko sa aking ano, sa aking mga requirements, parang bagsak pa rin. Hindi na naman kami nagkasundo nung kasama ko sa mission work. Hindi na naman kami nagkasundo nung ano, marami tayong hindi kasundo. Yes, these are these are problems that we need to deal with. Kailangan po nating harapin. Pero hindi po natin nakikita mga kapatid ay yung problema na gusto ng Panginoon makita natin na sa loob ng puso ng bawat Kristiyano. <coughs> Through faith we are declared righteous by God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1, the, the, the verse of justification and accepted as his what? Children because God looks into our hearts. Having the imputed righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, kaya sabi niya sa John 1.12, But as many as receive Him, to them gave be power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in His name. Through faith, we are cleansed by the blood of Christ, and has changed our inner selves as well as our outward standing with God. Napakasarap unawain. That's why Paul said, I myself would like to serve the law of God. <clears throat> We are in conflict with sin, yet the believer continues to live in the same human body and struggles with sin. Kahit tayo, si Kristo ay nasa puso na natin, andito pa rin tayo sa ano? Sa katawang lupang ito. We are still living in the same human body. Sino sa atin, ang nanam, nung nanampalataya kay Kristo, tumangos ang ilong, dadating pango ang ilong? Wala namang nagbago, di ba? Sa katawan natin, Ano lang ang nagbago? Ang katatayuan natin sa harap ng Panginoon. We are accepted in the beloved. We are God's children. We are righteous because of the righteousness of Christ. Pero hindi yun nabago ng ating, yung, ng ating panlabas na kanyuan. And yet, that old body is still the same body wherein the new man is living. And, and, uh, but since that human body is full of sin, the new The inner man struggles with sin. Patuloy pa rin yan, hindi yan nawawala. We are mortal and therefore subject to physical decay and death. Because we are in the body, we are called what? Sabi niya sa Romans 7.14, carnal. Ano sabi ni Paul doon? I, uh, yet I am what? Carnal. Kahit ako'y kristyano na, totoo sa buhay ko na nadodominate ng kasalanan ang aking buhay bilang isang kristyano. Do we accept that? Kinikilala pa ba natin o baka naman nang tinanggap ko si Kristo, naging mas righteous na ako sa lahat ng aking kasangbahay. Sinumpa ko na lahat ng mga nanana, nananalangin sa kanilang mga kanilang imahin at pinasama ko na ang hindi ko kasama sa pananampalataya. No, we don't become more righteous. Huwag tayong mag-behave na tayo ay righteous. Our righteousness is not ours. Our righteousness is Christ's righteousness. We cannot what? Take the glory of that righteousness. It simply rem- it, it makes us more humble because we are in spite of that righteousness, we are still struggling with sin because we are still in that same human body. We may either let our bodies control our spirits or vice versa. Sapagkat tayo na ay nasa tayo ay nasa human body pa na ito. Dalawang bagay lang ang pwedeng mangyari. It's either we let our bodies, the sinful flesh, control our spirits or our spirit. The new man will control that sinful body. Sa ngayon mga kapatid, kumusta ang buhay natin? Ano ang nananaig? Ang bagong pagkatao? Na inilagay ng Panginoon ang law of faith, the law of righteousness, the law of the spirit, the law of liberty in that heart? Or ang lumang pagkatao pa rin ang nananaig. Do we still struggle in, in doing what is for God? Pag nag-aaral pa tayo ng mga bagay na ukol sa Diyos dito sa church, do our spirits rejoice? Ay, salamat! Yan ang magagawa ko. O baka yung ating spirit ang sabi, ay nako, ang hirap na naman niyang pinapagawa sa atin sa church. Ang hirap na naman niyang mga bagay na bago na naman nating gagawin. Ang hirap, ang hirap, ang hirap. When our body, that sinful human body, controls our spirit, then it's difficult. But if it is the new man, then there will be rejoicing. Salamat sa Panginoon, nakilala ko siya. Salamat sa Panginoon, tinuruan niya kami sa church, and I will be serving the law of God. 
obeying the law of God. In 1 Corinthians 3.11, Paul calls the Corinthian believers carnal as, con as contrasted to mature, spirit-controlled believers. Mayroong carnal na kristyano dominated ng sinful desires, dominated by the, uh, the, human, uh, the human body which is fleshly and sinful. Pero mayroon namang mga mature Christians, ibig sabihin, hindi pa man perfect, but their life is controlled by the Holy Spirit. Saan tayo, mga kapatid? Sabi ni Paul sa Romans 7.15, For that which I do, I allow not. Sabi niya, yung dapat kong gawin, yun pa ang hindi ko nagagawa. Yun pa ang nahahadlangan ko. For what I would, sabi niya, yung ang dapat kong gawin, hindi ko nagagawa. Kung sa isang banda, sabi niya, nahahadlangan ko. Yun naman sa isang banda, sabi niya, ang dapat kong gawin, hindi ko nagagawa. But what I hate, pero yung dapat na hindi ko gawin, na kasuklaman ko kung nagagawa ko man, sabi niya, that I do. A true believer in Christ cannot love the evil that he does. What he hates, he will cease to do. Alam ba natin ang ating mga kinakasuklaman, mga kapatid? Do we hate sin in our old sinful body? Or do we hate what is the law of faith that God has put in our hearts? Mabigat ba yung ating pagtayo, pagtindig para sa Panginoon? Ako po mga kapatid, tumatanda na, nararamdaman ko na yung bigat ng aking katawan. Pero paggawain sa Panginoon, kahit walang kain, walang tulog. Hindi ko po ito sinasabi na pagmamalaki kundi ito po ay nilagay ng Panginoon na kagalakan sa akin. Because I know na kung para sa material na bagay, ang katawang lupang ito ay magaling. Saan magaling ang ating katawang lupa? Saan tayo magaling mga kapatid? Sa dikta ng katawang lupa na punong-puno, batbat ng kasalanan o sa dikta ng bagong pagkatao na yan ay nagdidikta sa atin na mahalin natin ang Diyos ng buong puso natin, buong kaluluwa natin, buong lakas natin at buong pag-iisip natin. What the believer hates, he will cease to do. And there, uh, <clears throat> thirdly, therefore, the believer does not willfully continue in sin. If he serves the law of God, he, he, he does not only have Christ in his heart and therefore there is conflict with sin, that he should hate sin and cease to do sin, but the believer does not willfully continue in sin. The truth is, sometimes we fall into sin. Di ba? Wala pa namang kristyanong perfecto. Tama? Kaya lang kung minsan, in-expect natin lahat ng kristyano ay ano? Perfecto. Bakit? Pag nagkamali ang kristyano, ikaw naman. Puro tayo paninisi, puro tayo pag-uusga pag nagkamali ang isang kristyano. As if the Christian is already perfect in this human life. Wala pang kristyanong perfecto, pero ang isang totoo sa isang kristyano, hindi siya magpapatuloy sa kasalanan. If ever he falls, he will stand up and conquer that sin. A true believer in Christ cannot love the evil, uh, sabi niya dito, on the other hand, he cannot have the mindset of fleshly and be willfully obedient to the Spirit of God. <clears throat> sa kaya sabi niya, now then, it is no more I that do it. Itong I na ito is the new man, is the old man. Sa kasalanan, hindi ako yung gumagawa, hindi the new man, but the sin that dwelleth in me. The I refers The I refers to the new man that the believer receives in Christ along with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. There is the new I dito sa Romans uh, chapter 7. And this is verse 17. Uh, it's verse 21. Sabi niya, I find then a law that when I this is another eye. Would do good, evil is present with me. There are two eyes. In Romans chapter 17, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 21, there is another eye that refers to the new man that the believer receives in Christ Jesus along with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And, the new, and this new spiritual creation desires no sin, 
and does no sin, but is in the, is the renewed image of God. This con contrast with and in is in conflict with the fleshly part of the believer who is pulled towards sin and continues in sin. So itong new eye, which is different from Romans 7, 17, this eye in Romans chapter 7, verse 20, 21, sabi niya, in contrast with the old eye, it is always in conflict with the fleshly part of the believer who is pulled towards sin and continues in sin. Gustong gusto ng uh, makasalanan ng katawan natin magpatuloy sa kasalanan. In contrast, dapat gustong gusto ng bagong pagkatao natin na magpatuloy sa katuwiran. Ang atin po bang pagnanais sa gawaing katuwiran, sa gawaing kalugod-lugod sa Panginoon ay patuloy o kaya katulad lang ng bagyo na may panahon, may bagyo sa Pilipinas, katulad ngayon may bagyo. Sa susunod na naman wala, ang atin po bang pagkagusto sa gawain para nakalulugod sa Panginoon ay patuloy? Dalawa yan eh, dalawang picture yan eh. The, the sinful nature wants to continue in sin, but the new nature should also want to continue in what? Righteousness. Pero ang tanong, if I find this conflict in my, in my life, and I would rather live according to the uh, dictate of the Holy Spirit, which is reno uh, of, of the Spirit, which is renewed after Christ, the new nature, mayroon bang pagpapatuloy? Do I have that conti uh, continuing desire for righteousness and for true holiness? <clears throat> the battle described in Romans 7 closes on a triumphant note. Although sa Paul said, O oh, wretched man that I am, because I am still in this body of sin. There is always what? A conflict. But Paul did not end this chapter in hopelessness. He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, when he thanked God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, ganyan din po ang kanyang sinabi, so then with, my, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. I do that what God expects of me, but that with the flesh, I do the law of sin. I thank God through the Lord Jesus Christ because I do not, I do not serve the law of sin, only the unredeemed flesh in which I dwell serve the law of sin. So hindi katuwang si Kristo sa aking buhay sa paggawa ng kasalanan. Si Kristo ang katuwang sa paggawa ng katuwiran. The final victory of the Christian life is then described in Romans 8.37. Nay, in all these things, what? We are more than conquerors through Him that love us. <clears throat> hindi lang uh, meaning to say that victory is promised. It is assured, and it is, and this is the only place in the New Testament where the verb to be more than conquerors occurred. Kasi sa ano sa sa pagkasulat sa New sa New Testament sa unang lingwahe na ginamit na Greek isang salita lang yon. Ito sa English to more to be more than conqueror ilang word yan. One, two, three, four, lima. Pero sa original na language, in the Greek language, isang salita lang yan. At minsan lang siya ginamit sa New Testament, Romans 8.37. That is the only occurrence of this same word, to be more than conquerors. Meaning to say, victory as assured. And when we fall, we cannot say, Panginoon, nagkamali ako sapagkat, nag, nabumagsak ako sapagkat hindi mo ako tinulungan. With God, there is always victory. When we do not, when we do not experience victory, we let the human flesh, that old nature, dictate our spirit. In 1 Corinthians 15, 57, sabi niya, But thanks be to God who giveth us what? The victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is another verse. Sa 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, chapter 2, verse 14, um, chapter 2, verse 14, sinasabi niya doon, <coughs> Not only that we have victory, assured victory, but a victory in every place. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Ang sabi niya, if you read your Bibles with me, gusto ko lang i-point out ang isang punto dito. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. So our victory is in Christ. It is assured because Christ dwells in our hearts. 
and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. And the victory of showing that we know Christ and we are taught of Christ is not only always, but it is in every place. As we conclude, brothers in the Lord, because of the truth the Apostle Paul has written in Romans chapter 6. Basahin natin ang Romans chapter 6. Sabi niya, nasira na ang lumang pagkatao. Dahil ito ay pinako na kasama ni Kristo. He discussed the believer's conflict with sin that he himself admitted as real in his life dito sa Romans chapter 7. <clears throat> but in Romans chapter 7, he concluded that there is deliverance from this conflict and that is through Christ. 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Always. Every time. And make it manifest the savor of his knowledge in every place. This triumph is always and in every place. <clears throat> and therefore, beloved in the Lord, as he concluded, we should know with mind, we should serve the law of God. With understanding, with conviction, he made a decision not to let the sinful flesh dominate his life. Katulad ni Apostle Pablo, mga kapatid, we should, with, with the mind, with conviction, with understanding, that we should not allow the sinful flesh dominate our life. This is the law of God. The law of God which is in Christ. When He dwelt in our hearts. And finally, sabi niya, I myself, even when left all alone, even there is, there is no one to stand with him because Christ is with him and he can do things pleasing to God. Serve the law of God. Minsan kasi ang kala natin, we serve the Old Testament law which is full of what? <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> na kung hindi natin nagawa, punong-puno ng punishment, punong-puno ng judgment. But the law of God, which is in Christ, <clears throat> which is through Christ in our hearts, gives us liberty. We should decide with understanding. We should decide that although we are left alone, we should live and serve the law of God. Now, we remember always <clears throat> those uh, two songs. Sabi niya, serving the law of God makes the song like, do right. I have decided to follow Jesus real in the lives of the believers in Christ. Diba sabi sa do right? Do, do right, though when there is no one else who stand by you, kahit na wala na, because conflict of the believers in the believer's life is not only focused on what is external, we should first resolve the internal conflict. And we don't need somebody. It is the conflict between our spirit, the new nature, and the old nature through the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it's wonderful to say, like the Apostle Paul, Who shall deliver me? O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this, from the body of this death? Verse 25 says, I thank God. It is true, Jesus Christ. Although itong pagkasabi niya dito, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mayroon, ito ay tinatawag na ellipsis. A word is missing but it's there. I thank God it is true, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Kaya may conclusion siya. And this, therefore, this should be our conclusion. So then, with mine, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Because with the flesh, but with the flesh, the law of sin. If we do not serve the law of God with understanding, with the commitment that although we are all alone, the only possible way that can happen is for believers to always serve sin. And we miss the real blessing in our lives. May God bless each one of us. Let's pray. Panginoon, napakarami pang mga bagay na ituturo mo sa amin. <clears throat> Alam po namin kulang ang panahon para matuto kami. Ginugol mo sa iyong mga alagad ang tatlong taong mahigit para turuan sila na napakaraming mga bagay na sinasabi mo na kung isulat sa ang mga tinuro mo at sinabi mo sa mga aklat ay hindi kasya ang mga aklat na yon sa buong mundo. Pero ang mga bagay na itinuro mo sa amin ay napakahalaga na way matutuhan po namin ito. 
Kulang Panginoon ang gawa, ang mga oras na nagugugol namin sa church na wa. Ang aming espiritu ay magkaroon po ng desisyon na sa aming mga tahanan ay matuto kami ng iyong mga salita. Sapagat napakahirap pong makipagbaka kung kapos kami ng lakas espiritual na nanggagaling sa iyong salita na nakasulat. Alam namin na buhay ang Kristo sa aming puso pero kailangan po namin ng written word in our hearts together with the living word who is Christ in our hearts. Bless your people every day. Bless us today as we go back to our homes with the decision and the commitment to serve the law of God, being your people in Christ. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.